Hallelujah. Matthew 8, starting verse 23, says, Now when he got into a boat, his disciples followed him, and suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with the waves. But he, talking about Jesus, was asleep. Uh, then his disciples came to him and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But he said to them, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? And he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, Who can, be, who can this be, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Father, we thank you for your word today, for your blessings, God, your anointing. God, we just ask you, Lord, to, to speak to us today from your word today, Lord. Your word is anointed. Father, I can do nothing on my own. I stand in need of you, Lord, and I ask you if you would speak through me, Lord, that your people are blessed today, God. Hallelujah. I stand in need of you, Lord, and we trust in you, God, that you will bless your people. Feed us from your word today, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, reading here uh, in the 8th chapter of Matthew, uh, again, it seems like all scripture, I guess, has become familiar over a period of time. We begin to uh, realize that the book gets really small the more you read and study into it. Uh, a familiar story we find that, uh, and, and we're going to cover another story, uh, about it, a time it seems like in between the miracles that Jesus is doing, in between things, uh, have you ever noticed as we studied in the scripture that it always seems like when something, they're going through things and they say, okay, the Lord's like, all right, let's get in the boat and go to the other side. I don't know how many times we read that in the New Testament. They're like, okay, get in the ship, go to the other side. And I don't know if it's just because the people were so many uh, that they just couldn't get away. The day was spent and the people wouldn't go. I don't know if they just, what the situation is. We find one time, and we'll read about it here probably shortly, uh, where Jesus is like, you disciples, go ahead. I'm going to send the people away and he's going to pray. We find over and over that there's things happening, happening in the middle. Uh, I've preached on this topic before about those things happening between the miracles. and uh, So we look at this scripture one more time and we, we examine and dig into it just a little bit. We find that, that Jesus had been teaching. This is still relatively early in the ministry. Uh, he's been teaching the people. He's given parable after parable after parable to the people. And most of them are scratching their head. They, they don't, they're intrigued. They're, 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 they're listening. A, a major crowd has come. But they don't really get the notion and understanding. They don't understand it. And the Bible says that the Lord is kind of telling the disciples what he's meaning about it. And it comes to a point where he says, okay, let's get in the boat and let's go to the other side. And the Bible says that Jesus goes to sleep. Now, I don't recall any other time where I find where he's asleep, other than when he's in this ship, asleep and everyone's working hard. But the Bible says that something kind of comes up out of nowhere. And it causes, calls it a a tempest wind. And uh, when you look up that word tempest, it means uh, a commotion of the air. A commotion of the air. The wind began to blow out of nowhere. They were on their way. Uh, they've already been spent all that they're doing. They're on their way to the other side. The wind all of a sudden begins to blow. And if you read it, it says that it begins to blow the water into the boat. It doesn't say anything about rain. Doesn't say anything about thunder and lightning, but the wind is blowing, and it's blowing hard. It's contentious. It's 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 antagonizing. It's it's coming. It's it's chaotic, and it's blowing. You find the disciples as the wind begin to blow again. This is still early in Jesus's ministry. As the wind is blowing and the, all the things is going, I'm sure they're trying to get things together. These are many of these men on this boat are, are sailors. They're, they're, they're fishermen. They, they're used to storms. But it seems unusual to me that almost every time they went across the lake, the same thing happened. The wind would begin to blow. And the storm seemed like it would just begin to shake the boat. Let me read another scripture and then we'll come back to here. Matthew 14 and 22, it says... This is, now, this is a few chapters later. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had uh, uh, sent all everybody away, he went up into the mountain himself to pray. And in the evening come, he was there alone. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by waves, for the wind was contrary. 
This is the time when Jesus comes walking out on the water and Peter looks out at the Lord and he says, Lord, you know, they're afraid, they're all scared, they think it's a ghost. And, and the Lord says, be not afraid, it is I. And Peter gets bold enough, he says, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come to you. Y'all know the story. The Bible says that Peter climbed down out of the boat onto the water and he began to walk across the water into the Lord all the way up into the point that he said he's seen that the wind was boisterous and he began to sink. Every time it seems like something going on, every time they begin to cross this lake, every time they're, they're going from one place to the next, in between one highlight miracle to the next miracle, over and over we kind of see the same thing. This wind begins to blow. Can I tell you, I've been noticing not only in my own life and my own family and things around, but I hear people talking as pastors. Sometimes people share a lot of things with you. And, and I've been noticing that as God is moving in many lives and we're seeing miraculous, we heard testimonies of what God is doing and things that's happening. Sometimes even though God is blessing and moving, all of a sudden out of nowhere, the wind begins to blow. And we want to call this a storm many times. We want, to, we want to look at this as if it's just coming down and lightning. But see, we didn't say anything about lightning and thunder and all these things. It said there was a wind that began to blow and it began to cause that which is around us. The waves begin to get all crazy and the water begin to come in. Not because thunder and lightning or even rain. It's because the wind began to blow. And it began to be chaotic. And that which is on the outside began to fill up the boat. And they got afraid. Have you ever wondered why the Lord woke up and said, why are y'all afraid? Well, I mean, look around, Jesus. You up to your knees in water in this boat. I mean, it doesn't say that, but, you know, I'm, I'm putting that in there. Y'all are mighty quiet. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all scaring me. Got my glasses off for a reason. Thank you, Jesus. Man, Jesus gets up and is like, oh, you have little faith. The first time we find it in the eighth chapter we're reading, we find when, 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 when they, uh, uh, they get afraid. and one, one, We have several different disciples. Uh, you know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They're all uh, different ones telling the same stories of the life of Jesus from their perspective. So you read in, uh, over in Matthew and you read in Mark and you also read in Luke. They're all telling the same story, but from a different person's perspective. But this is one of the stories that you will find very, very united in how the words are described. Very, very linked together in, in what is, is being said. Very close. And they're written not within days of each other. Years of these stories from each other. Let's read that 26. It says, but he said to them, why are you fearful? Oh, you of little faith. Then he arose, rebuked the winds and sea, and there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be that even the winds and sea obey him? Do you know one of the things that God is doing is he is bringing us into different places with him, and he is taking us forward in, in our journey with the Lord. And, uh, Let's just be real. It's not so hard when Jesus is healing everybody. He's breaking out the bread. We watched the little video where Sister Emma was singing uh, that he's breaking bread and breaking the fish and feeding the 5,000. Man, that's, that's fun church right there. It's real good to come in on Sunday when we're singing. We're having a good time. We testified. Everything feels really good, especially like last Sunday. Man, after service was over, we had food. Man, those are great Sundays. But between those Sundays, sometimes the wind gets to blowing. Between those Sundays, when, when, when everything isn't all easy, sometimes the wind gets to causing chaos and confusion and all of these things. And that which is all around us feels very threatening. All that which is around us, all that we're surrounded with, feels threatening. In this particular instance, we're reading that Jesus is in the boat. And the Bible said his eyes is closed, his head is on the pillow. Sister Emma's uh, grandmother used to have a saying, all shut eyes ain't sleeping. Some of y'all ain't used to that old school stuff right there. All shut eyes ain't sleeping. The Lord of the Bible said he's asleep inside the ship, inside the boat. But the Bible said that the waves were beating on the ship. 
All shut eyes ain't always sleeping. Sometimes we feel like, God, where are you at? You, you, surely, God, you know about all that's happening around me. You see all of this confusion. But were they really in danger as long as Jesus was in the ship with them? See, they didn't have an understanding. Let me take you back just a little bit, and we'll get back to here. I know I'm jumping around. Do you remember back when Moses was called to the Lord? Y'all remember he had the burning bush? You know, take your sandals off. You stand on holy ground, that same Moses. Do you remember when the Lord was calling him and to get him uh, assigning his purpose unto him? What's the first thing that Moses wanted to do? He said, hmm, well, Lord, you know, I don't talk real good. You know, I, I, I got a little stutter. I don't have a good speech. Who am I, Lord, to do such a thing? See, Moses didn't understand who he was. He was called. He was chosen. He had a purpose in his life. Didn't matter what your qualifications are. Didn't matter if he had a stutter. Didn't matter any of these things. Let me tell you something. There's nothing that's in your life that makes you worthy, that makes you qualified. But when God says, I want to use you, I love you, I want to, I want to use somehow another, there's something in you that I need. Oh, let me tell you something. You can have every excuse in the world. And the Lord said, I've got it. Moses said, who am I? Because, see, sometimes we don't know who we are when God is calling us. When God wants change in our life, when he's taking us to that next place. We don't know who we are. And the next thing he says, well, if I go, uh, who am I going to tell them that sent me? What's he saying? Who are you? God said, I am that I am. What's that mean? It means when you have a problem, I'm the one going to fix it. Well, what about when they get upset? I'm going to take care of it. I am. Who sent me? I am him. It ain't about you. See, the biggest problem sometimes we have is understanding who we are and knowing who he is. The biggest trouble we have is fully committing ourselves to the point to where we're fully in no matter what, God. I know who I am. I know who you are. And there's no turning back. Peter was fully committed when he stepped out of the boat and he reached out. And the Lord said when he began to sink, the Lord reached down and got him. I tell you that sometimes you don't always get it right. Sometimes you miss the mark. Sometimes you get distracted by all the chaos and all the storms. Doesn't mean that God has forsaken you. Doesn't mean Jesus has left you out. He's not going to uh, no longer use you because you got distracted. Sometimes the wind is just blowing. Sometimes the wind is just trying to get you so Discombobulated, if you would. That's a good one. You know what happens when you get discombobulated? You forget who you are. You forget whose you are. You forget all those good things that God... We had testimony around here earlier. You forget about all those good things God's done for you. Because the chaos. Because the wind is causing things. Are you really in danger? No. Not if you're a child of God. Were they really in danger? The first time we found Jesus was asleep in the boat. Second time we find Jesus has uh, left them there in the boat by themselves. Similar situation. The wind is blowing. They're rowing. They can't get anywhere. They're fearful. And all of a sudden they look out and they see what looks like a ghost coming across the water. And the Bible says they were so afraid. And Jesus said, be of good courage. The wind didn't stop blowing. But Jesus says, I'm still here. You thought you were alone in this boat all by yourself, but I've never left you. When the storms and the wind and all the things come into your life and you feel all by yourself, I have never left you. I don't have to stand all the way up against you and you being sitting in my hip pocket for me to still have power over your life. He showed Peter that you don't have to be in the safety of the boat to still be safe. Hear what I'm telling you. You don't have to be in the safety of the boat to still feel safe. There's things that we put our faith in in this world. There are things that we think, Lord, if I could just this, if I could just, if everything would just be in this safe spot, everything will be okay. And the Lord said, you know what, Peter, come on, step out of the boat. Because you ain't got to be in anything this world offers to keep you safe. All you have to do is be in the obedience of my word. And Peter had enough smarts to say, Lord, he didn't just jump out on the water. He said, Lord, if it's you bid me to come. And the Lord said, come. And all he needed was that obedience step out. And every step he took, you know what? The water was firm. Wind was still blowing. Chaos still stirring. People standing in amazement, watching him on the water. 
And even in the presence of the Lord, Peter still got distracted by the wind. God's blessings could be all over your life. Don't beat yourself up because you still get distracted by the wind sometimes when chaos is blowing around. Don't, don't let, the, let everything disappoint you and have you held down so tight. Just be fully committed unto the Lord. Fully committed unto the Lord. Lord, no matter what it is, God, I've, I'm trusting you. Lord, I put everything in your hands. I trust you 100%. Fully committed. Peter was fully committed when he was stepped out on the water. Do you know what happened when they went from the bank in that boat and got out into the water? Once they got off the shore, they were fully committed to the sea or to the lake or whatever, where they were at. Some places it calls it a sea, but it's actually a lake. A big lake. But they were fully committed. I read in the book of Ezekiel, the 47th chapter, where Ezekiel said he sees a, a door, a throne room, a door, and a water coming out from underneath it. He said, and as the water went out, the angel took him out and measured a thousand cubits. And he said, he took me out into water, water that was to the ankles. He said and he measured a little bit further. He took him a little bit deeper. I went out another thousand cubits. He said the water went from his ankles up to his knees. And the water got a little deeper. Again, the angel of the Lord took him and measured out another thousand. Took him a little deeper. The water was to the loins. And the water uh, it was getting harder. Uh, the, the stream is harder to control. But he said he measured a thousand and went out a little bit deeper. He said these were waters that one could not pass over. You couldn't walk through this. It said waters to swim. To get into that place, you've got to be fully committed unto God that no matter what, when the storm is blowing, when the wind is blowing, when the chaos is going on, no matter what you're willing, what you want, and what you think, Lord, I'm committed. The Bible said that that water, wherever it went, was healing. And when you fully commit into God, God will use you, and everywhere you go, there will be healing into your families, into the nations, into your community, places you go. Why? Because you're fully committed. Yes, sometimes you're going to fall and you're going to have to reach up and get his hand. That's part of the process. But he will always be there to pick you up as long as you're always reaching for him. As long as you're always committed to the process. Lord, I don't have to be perfect. Can I tell you, your pastor is not perfect. But I'm committed. I'm fully committed. Everything I can do, everywhere I can go, whatever I can do, just because I love him. Because I want heaven to be my home. I don't want to stand before judgment in the end days. And he said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. I don't want to walk into this whole life and, and halfway serve God. I want to be committed. I want to be committed. Hallelujah. Let me ask you a question today. I'm almost done, see. He ain't got a long message today. I'm almost through. Who are you? Do you know? Do you truly know who you are today? Now talk about the person that was assigned your name. Your mom and daddy said your name is going to be this. Because if you don't like your name, you can legally change it. Because my dad legally changed his. Y'all all know me as Joe Jr., but my dad's first name used to be Washington. Y'all almost was uh, have Pastor Washington if I'd been junior. But my dad said, I, I, don't, I want a different name. I think he changed his name for more than one reason. He had a lot of years of escaping prison after prison. He wanted to be a new person, a new start. He didn't like his name anyway. All the way through the rest of his life, everyone that knew him. I didn't even know his name was different until to the end. I'm not who I used to be. But Sister Sandy, I know who I am now. I'm not who I was as a little kid growing up. All the mistakes. The teenager. The young adult. I'm not that person anymore. I thank God that I've been born again. And I know who I am. And I look around this room and I want to encourage you. You need to know not only who you are, but whose you are. Because the Lord loves you. And His calling for you, it is real. His calling for you is direct. His love for you and His purpose in your life. He will be there and you will make some mistakes along this journey. I promise you. 
Peter got his eyes off the Lord and he began to sink. And the Lord said, Whoop, I got you. I got you. You're going to mess up sometimes. This just happens. But be fully committed that when you do mess up, I'm not turning back, Lord. I'll be bold enough to get down on my knees and say, Lord, forgive me. And you quit doing the things that you were doing. See, it's one thing to willfully sin. It's another thing to say, Lord, you know, I've made some mistakes. Let me make this change and decide to change. You can do it. We all have it. Lord, I fully commit to you. I want to be fully committed. Come on, stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moses said, Lord, I, I can't speak. Lord, I got a stutter. He says, all right, Moses, I'm going to send you some help. I'm going to send Aaron for you. And Aaron speaks real good. He's going to help you. The Lord said, here's your staff. Turn your staff. He, man, what, what did the Lord do? The Lord turned a staff into a snake, turned it back. Man, we've seen all kinds of things. We've seen the miraculous take place. Seen miracle after miracle. And Moses never got to taste what we can taste. The promise of God, the spirit living on the inside of you. I'm going to leave you with this example, then we're going to pray. I was watching, I seen this thing pop up in uh, one of these little feeds or whatever. Someone had an example. This guy had two plastic cups. He had a pretty, like a yard torch, you know. Some of you guys might have burned your grass or something, you know, in the big torch. Hooks to the propane tank, big torch. He had some bricks set up and he had two red solo cups. One was completely full to the top with water. The other was empty. And he took that torch and he went underneath it. There were bricks set up with a hollow point. He went underneath it. And buddy, that one with nothing inside of it, y'all know what happened. It just shriveled up and melted, fell off the thing. But that one that was full of water, it didn't move. And he turned it and he heated it and he cranked it up. And that water went around in the very top edge, barely a little bit of that edge where water wasn't quite to the full. That part got burnt. But I want you to know as long as the water was full on the inside, that which was on the outside could not harm it. The cup never melted under high heat because it was full. And let me tell you, the Bible says that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And if you have what's on the inside full, that which is on the outside, all the chaos, all the wind blowing, all the waves, all the storm... It's more important what's on the inside than what turmoil is on the outside. The flame of that torch couldn't melt that cup because of what was on the inside. And let me tell you, all the hell can't come against you. All the hell can't break you. All the hell can't send you back. It can't do you no harm as long as you keep what's on the inside full. It ain't about what's on the outside. It's about what's on the inside. Keep it full. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you today for your word, God. I thank you for your anointing for your people here. And, Lord, this is a simple word today, Lord, but I just thank you, Lord. God, that we need to be fully committed unto you, Lord, and full to the top with your anointing, with your peace, with your grace. Lord, your word said, out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. And, Lord, you are that water. You told the woman at the well that if she was thirsty, if she knew who it was, that she would ask for a drink. And today, Lord, I ask you to fill our cup. Everyone in this room, Lord, I ask you, God, fill their cup today. Fill it to the brim, Lord, because we have chaos around us, Lord. Sometimes the flames of this world, the heat and the turmoil of this world, it gets awful hot, Lord. And when we are not full, we, we have a tendency, Lord, to take much damage. And I ask you today, Father, Lord, as we pray today, Lord, fill our cup. We're here for a purpose and a reason, Lord. We need you. Fill our cup today, Lord. Hallelujah. In your name, Jesus. In your name, Jesus. I, I